What's up, guys? We are back. Fitness, Profit, Multiplier, Anthony and Jimmy. Today, we're going to be discussing three things that you don't think you need when starting your fitness business. So you just opened up your gym and you're like, all right, cool. Besides people, what else do I need? You know, maybe in the beginning, and I'm guilty of this too, you're taking payments manually. You're scheduling people manually. I did that for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of things that we're going to too discuss long. today, but, but there's too three long, things. There's three things in particular that we're going to go over that's going to help you in the beginning if you're just starting out your fitness business. So let's get it rolling, man. Let's, let's, let's do this. I'm excited. The first things first is that CRM. Uh huh. Oh, man, you need that right away. I wish if I could go back in time, I would have gotten that right away. Yes, in the beginning, especially it is an investment. It's probably cost you anywhere between again, depending on the one that you use, but anywhere between like 180 a month to like 250 a month, give or take. Yeah. But you need a system to auto bill people. You, you, that is so, so important. It's 20, as of the recording of this, it's 2023. You shouldn't be manually putting credit cards in. And like the thing that people, that makes me like go crazy too, is I was on the phone with a gym owner and she went to the local bank and got like a credit card processing machine to charge the, the machine. Like you can't manually put numbers into the machine. No, I recommend Zen planner. That's what we use. They're not sponsoring us um, saying that, but that's what we use. A lot of people use Zen planner and mind body. Those are probably the two biggest ones. Uh, yes, there's a learning curve with all these things, but Zen planner has been pretty good for me all this time. And like I said, I wish I would have gotten it in the beginning. It just makes things so much easier for you. And they have great <clears throat> customer support from what I have experienced. So you have an issue with the software, you can call somebody right away. They talk you through the issues with it. You can even have your staff call them because like they're really good about walking you through the process and how to use it. So you're going to need to build some standard operating procedures in your business to use Zen Planner, but um, we've used it since we opened and I've only heard horror stories about other softwares, right? I've never really heard horror stories about Zen Planner. You'll see in the forums or in like group, Facebook groups and stuff, people will talk about, oh, MindBody rolled out this new change and it broke all my stuff, right? Or they'll use some off-brand, you know, gym owner who decided to get into the software space and build his own CRM. Oh, I use one, two, three form builder or whatever it is, or I use, um, you know, I, I don't know what the, the other names are, but every now and then you'll hear about some guy that's out there building his own and he owns a gym and then builds his own software, tries to get into the software space because he doesn't like the options that are out there and does not have the financial backing to make his software good. So it just falls flat on its face, but you think you're saving money or doing somebody a solid by jumping on the next best thing. No, you're better off picking one that's well-known, that's a big brand and sticking with it, right? And staying with it and just staying with it for the long haul. All these conversations in these groups where it's like, Oh, should I switch from this software to that software? And da, 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 da. every time I see that conversation, I'm like, I kind of get sick of it because I'm, I look at it and I go, why are we still talking about this? Like, go call your leads. Like, what, what, why do you need to like debate what software is best and what to switch from and this and that? Just pick one. There's always going to be a learning curve to every software, but Zen Planner. The, the one cool thing, the really cool thing about it is the scheduling component is really seamless for your members, right? So it makes things very easy for you to, to set up. And a little story about, about my, uh, my co-host, co-owner here, uh, buddy, friend on the other end. I remember we were, we were in a mastermind group. And he's like feverishly texting on his phone, like feverishly. And I'm just like, like he's got a, like he's got a crack problem with his, with his texting. Right. And I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm scheduling clients. And I'm like, are you serious? It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm booking them in and this and this and that. And at that time, I think Anthony had like a half a million dollar business. 
and he was still scheduling people like manually through text because he didn't have a, a scheduling software that he used. And I was like, bro, if you would have got your scheduling software in the beginning, you would have way less of a headache. You think you don't need it and you think you can skirt past having some of these things. Very important to have a self-scheduler for your clients. Very important to have a automatic billing system. Um, get them in the same package and run with it. So mind, body, or Zen Planner are the two big ones. We're quite partial to Zen Planner. Um, but if you're just manually scheduling people right now, even if you have 10 or 20 clients and you're manually scheduling them, you need to very quickly get some sort of software because it's going to make your life a ton easier. And don't think about like when you're early in your business, you're like, I want to save money. I want to save this hundred bucks or this 200 bucks. Don't think about it like that. Think about it as how much time are you going to save by allowing your clients to self-schedule? Even if you're scheduling 20 people, like you got to text 20 people every week. No, you don't want to do that. Yeah. So that, that's the second one, scheduling software. So yeah. uh, I had mind body for like an hour and it was ridiculously <laughs> complicated, ridiculously complicated. That's why we, I went over to Zen Planner. Zen Planner is very, very simple. But again, I think in the beginning, having it makes you look more professional as well. Like, like Jimmy said, at that point, I had half a million dollar business and I was still, I, I literally would put down my phone and pick it up to 80 text messages. No joke. Like that's what it was because everyone was texting about appointments and I can't make it in and this and that and the other thing. So when I found out Zen Planner does scheduling, I'm like, oh, okay, perfect. So that's the second thing is scheduling. You need something to schedule people in. So that's why we like Zen Planner because it kind of comes together. They're very simple. They have an app. You can set your parameters in the app for when they can cancel, when they can schedule. They take themselves in and out of appointments. And as soon as I made that shift, my text message went from 80 to like 10. So it's a big, big difference uh, there and definitely a huge time saver. So that's number two. Uh, Jimmy kind of jumped ahead there, but most of these things kind of come together. A lot of people, I've heard other people using like Stripe um, and other things like that. And Stripe is cool to use in conjunction with uh, like Zen Planner. So for example, if somebody pays on Stripe, like let's say you, you create a button on your website for people to I don't know, whatever buy. So they buy on the website, right? Let's just say they buy on the website. Uh, that could get payment could get through paid through Stripe. And then you could go into Zen Planner and still put them in the Zen Planner. So this way, Zen Planner tracks everything for you. Because not only is Zen Planner going to track your, your customers, uh, when they owe payment, auto paying them, it's also going to calculate your numbers of your business. You're going to be able to project your numbers going forward. Like I can pull up my Zen Planner now and it'll project what I'm going to make next month. It'll project what I'm going to make six months from now. It'll project all these other things. And it's cool to have that data. So I like having that all in one spot. So that's why a CRM is good. So, because at one point I was also taking payments through PayPal. I was taking payments through Zen Planner. And I just moved everything to Zen Planner because it makes things so much easier. Because again, PayPal was free, right? I mean, aside from the fees, but PayPal was free. There was no charging with PayPal. And they gave you like a terminal. So you can literally take someone's card and hard swipe it. But uh, it's not necessary. Don't need it. But again, even still, if I was to do it now and I was to, let's just say, whatever, start an online component to my business and I needed to use Stripe, I would still integrate that payment into Zen Planner so I can track my business as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of those things, guys, where you don't think that you need any of this stuff in the beginning and you'll you'll get either a PayPal card reader or I remember we got... Uh, but back when Square was a thing, right? Like we got the Square in the beginning and or we were taking checks um, and it was just a cluster. Like it was just an absolute cluster and bookkeeping was really tough. I mean, bookkeeping with a, a software that tracks it all is like very easy to just run a report and then send it to your accountant or run a report and, um, you know, have it, with your bookkeeper in house and, and have them run, run some things. Um, so it just makes things so much more seamless. Uh, before we jump to our next topic, when we look at Zen planner or these softwares that we use, we also want a software for your lead management, right? So as much as Zen planner is helpful and has some automation email 
functionality, it's not good enough for new leads, right? So we don't typically use that software. That's the billing and scheduling software for lead follow-up, right? So you may want to try to do that in the beginning. Well, oh, I just need one. I just need one. So I'm just going to use the functionality of the one software. And Zen Planner has tried to be a lead follow-up source for a time. Like they had a form builder that you could put a form on your website and have people fill it out. Um, but you're better off having a lead management, like a lead pipeline management software that's separate from your actual billing and scheduling software. So having those two things separate is going to be better functionality for your business um, because once they're done with this column, when they're, you're following up with them as a lead, you can port them into your um, client management. Once you close them, you can port them into the client management. And then it's like two separate systems, right? Where you're not worried about like what's going on with leads and this and that. This is like client communication leads and, and Anthony uses his lead follow-up software just as a lead follow-up software. I use it to communicate with my clients as well um, for like promos and things like that. But that's where you keep your list. That's where you manage your leads. That's where you look at the flow of them. You can track the, the communication, the text messages, the phone calls, things like that. Um, and we can help you guys with that. If that's something that, you know, you want to get on a call and we can help you um, kind of get that going and, and actually manage that software for you because it is kind of a bear. Um, but that's just one sachet that I wanted to take in regards to the software, the delineation between the two softwares. So you need a client management software that allows you to bill and schedule. Like that's, that's one side. And then you need a client management software that allows you to follow up with leads, right? And those are two things are separate. So they call them CRMs, client relationship managers, right? Um, but you need functionality of those two different things. And they don't always exist within the same software, um, which is kind of a pain in the ass in the beginning. Cause you're like, I have to duct tape all these damn softwares together and this sucks. Um, but there are certain softwares out there that you don't have to duct tape together as much, but I would keep those two things separate. Yeah, 100%. That's the next thing too. It's really important because it just helps you to, to, with communication, like Jimmy said, it just helps to keep you organized a little bit. Like I still, yeah. even though I have like a lead nurture software where I can keep all the leads and stuff. I still have my back end like spreadsheet that I look at, you know, cause that helps me look at everything as a whole. But like, if I was to start another location, I would just have, that would be everything for me. Like the lead software would be everything. I would use that entirely. Like right now we just have kind of already, everything was kind of like pieced together, so to say before. So it's like, it's working now. I don't want to break it and move everything over again. So, but yeah, that's number two is having that CRM system for both. Like Jimmy said, you need a scheduling and billing software, and then you need a lead management system on the other side of it. And the third thing is, and I'm going to let Jimmy take this one, is a good accountant. So I've been blessed to have a good accountant from the beginning. Uh, since I started working, I had a really good accountant who kind of helped me along the way. So uh, I didn't even realize this was kind of like a piece that you needed because I already had it. So yeah. I'm going to let Jimmy take this one because uh, I didn't think anything of it. Uh, for me, it was just, I had the accountant. So, and you know, maybe I'm an oddity, but, um, I'm sure a lot of people try and save money and go, um, well, actually I know for a fact that I'm not an oddity because I've met plenty of business owners, not just in the fitness space, but in other spaces that, um, want to save money and do their books themselves. Right. Um, so that is, I'm just going to flat out say it, that's stupid. And I was stupid for doing that. Okay. Don't do that. Do not try and do your books yourself. You're going to rip your hair out. You're going to spend hours fighting with QuickBooks. And you're not going to do a good job of tracking everything. Right? So you need an accountant to keep you on the straight and narrow to remind you what to do on a regular basis. To say, all right, I need this documentation from you. And now I need this documentation from you. And and you got to pay this in taxes and you got to do that. And, and, you know, just make sure that everything's above board and everything's categorized properly, right? Because you don't know what things are, how things are categorized and you don't want to spend your time categorizing your expenses. And, and uh, you know, all we do is like, we build a sales report out, we send our sales report to our accountant. And then when it comes time to do taxes, we got to do some like contractor based, you know, like W9 submission and stuff like that. And then, 
it's kind of it. And he takes care of it all from there. But when I was starting out in the beginning and I had, you know, a couple handfuls of clients, I think I had 18 or 19 clients. Uh, we were making like five grand a month. I was doing my own books and I had a client help me with it because she worked as like a bookkeeper for another company, but it was all over the place. It was like, I was getting a check from one person. I was getting, uh, you know, Stripe payment or a uh, square payment from another person. Another person was paying me in cash. Do I track the cash? Like, do I, am I making enough money to make this like make any sense in terms of like registering my business or, or whatever. Right. So I finally, this bookkeeper client of mine that helped me out a lot in the beginning was like, we really need an accountant. We really need an accountant. And I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. We'll just figure it out. It's not a big business yet. And then she found the accountant and he goes, I'm glad you found me because your books are fucked. <laughs> Basically <laughs> your books are screwed up. We got to re go back and like figure out when your business entity started and do all this shit. And so um, it was kind of a nightmare in the beginning. So even if you're just starting out and even if you don't hire an accountant, like full time for your business, like that's doing bookkeeping for you, like on a monthly Hire an accountant as a consultant, right? Go meet with somebody, go sit down with an accountant so you can look at your books and look at what's going on and make sure that you're on the right path and you're above board with everything. Um, so if you don't have an accountant yet and you're trying to do QuickBooks on your own and, and learn it on your own and all this kind of stuff, there's a certain point where learning stuff on your own is way less valuable than just having somebody take care of it, right? You don't want to learn how to do all the build out at your gym. And I'm sure you do a couple of things here and there, but you're going to hire a contractor to do it, right? You're going to hire a plumber to work on your pipes at your house. So just like people are going to hire us to help them figure out what they need to do with their bodies to make it healthy because they don't know. So when it comes down to hiring a professional to manage your finances and your business and make sure that you're above board with your taxes, hire an accountant, just do it. Like, even if you're really, really small and it's in the beginning, these are things you don't want to skimp on. These are things that you want to start running your business with in the beginning so that you don't have a headache later on when you're, when you're making real money. Yeah, these things also will help you to scale your business a lot faster too. Because if you have your books in order, like, so my accountant like does my QuickBooks and like deals with all that stuff, but I can still go in there and I kind of know what's going on. Like I can go in there, I can see where, where my business is at, what's what's in, what's out. Like I can look at all that stuff. So that's why, you know, it's so important to have that stuff right out of the gates. This way you can scale your business faster and focus on your main task as a business owner right now, marketing and sales. Like Jimmy said, instead of going online and complaining about, oh, my body did this, my body did that. That 10 minutes that it took you to put that post up online, you could have called two or three leads already. So yep. Just pick up the phone, start dialing and focus on growing your business and not focus on the little minutia stuff that doesn't matter at all. So those are the three things, guys. Zen Planner, um, a lead nurture follow-up system. And again, a good, good accountant will go a long way in helping your business go from zero to 100, 150, 200 clients and scale your business that much faster. All right, if you guys want help on any of this, just make sure you click those links below. Leave us a five-star review. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.